Hello everyone, welcome to my online prep. Today we'll start with chapter 3 of our module A that is organizational change. In this chapter, we'll be learning about the basic concepts of organizational change. What is the relationship between change and development? Who should act as the change agent and their responsibilities? The task for managing change. We will also study about an important theory given by John P. Cotters that is 8 step to successful change and responsibility charting. So let us start with the first topic of today's session. Great leader John F. Kennedy said that change is the law of nature. It means that it cannot be avoided. We are changing constantly and so is the environment around us. Thus it is very important that we adapt to the change for this adaption it is very important that we manage the change efficiently similarly just like in our general lives the organizations also witness various forms of change the most important one is the evolution of technology technology has brought far-reaching transformation in the organizational atmosphere so it is important that we follow the rules of change management if we want the organization to work successfully so now let us start with first understanding what is change management. It is a systematic approach to dealing with change both from the perspective of an organization and on the individual level. So if there is any type of change that is occurring in the organization be it in the form of the change of management, the senior management or there is a new product or the change of strategy. So it is very important that we deal with it in a systematic way both from the organizational level as well as the individual who are working in the organization. So it has three different aspects that is adapting to change. It is important that we adapt to whatever change is happening, controlling the change and affecting change. Also herein it is we can say it is a proactive approach. We are using this term very frequently proactive means continuously and Successful adaption to change is crucial within the organization just like it is in the natural world. Just like plants and animals, organizations also they encounter various forms of changes. The conditions that are occurring in the organization, they are constantly changing more on the individual level also. So change management, it entails thoughtful planning and sensitive implementation. Sensitive because it is the humans who make the organization and above all it is important to have consultation with and involvement of the people who are affected by the changes not just the ones bringing the change also who are affected by the change and it is important to check that the people affected by the change they agree with they do not want to resist they should understand the need for change and have a chance to decide how the change will be managed and to be involved in the planning and implementation of change. It is not just change cannot be just imposed on the employees. It needs to be understood and managed in a way that people can cope effectively with it. Now change can definitely be unsettling. So the manager it is the responsibility of the manager to logically settle the understand the need of change and have a chance. They should give the people a chance to understand why the change is happening, how they will be better affected by the change it will bring positive changes and so on so herein various steps can be taken by the change managers or the change agents to effectively implement these changes now let us see how the organizational change its definition scope and features work so organizational change is the modification in any or all of the internal environment of the organizations these modifications can be in the structure of the organization the new technology that is being used physical settings such as renovation or even relocation of the offices and human resources new talent can be recruited this leads to the change in the human relations that were existing earlier the time span the control span coordination and even decentralization of authority now in the last decade that is the 20th century it witnessed a high degree of global competition that is 
with the increasing globalization the domestic industries are open to the rest of the world and they now saw a more customer dominated marketing that is if they wanted to stay in the competition they wanted to make profits they had to focus more on how to attract new customer base so there was infinite technical know how and irrespective of the activity the globally competitive firms they had to change they had to modify their content as well as their spirit that is the modification of workflow division of tasks even hierarchy the way hierarchy worked in the traditional way it has changed now so here in studies were conducted and they showed that the physical facilities like buildings colorings the whole environment they do influence the employee motivation to work in the organization thus healthy organization this is a term that is used healthy environment or healthy workplace this is better it leads to better productivity so these are some of the concepts these are some of the organizational changes that are occurring so it definitely has a very high scope for the managers they have to manage manage effectively the change that is occurring so here what is important is the process of, of effective communication appropriate decision making and timely problem solving this will help changing the attitudes of the employees this will help removing any reasons of resistance on the part of employees now let us see what is the relationship between change and development the discussion that we have had so far explains us what is change management it is all the activities that refers to the preparing as well as supporting of the employees so that the necessary steps for changing they can be implemented so now how change has a relationship with development so it has a positive relationship significant organizational changes occur when an organization intends to change its overall strategy for success it adds or removes a major section or practice or it plans to change the very way or the very nature by which it operates so these are significant organizational changes this will completely change the face of the organization the relationships the various life cycles these are influenced by these changes thus it is important to have an effective communication communication regarding the steps that have to be taken the decision making it has to be made to the employees now there is a increased body of research practice and tools available that provide a clear perspective on the overall organizational change and development it also provides sufficient guidelines and the action points for successful change it is not difficult change implementation is now not difficult because there are various researches and practices we will be also discussing about some of them in the further slides so to initiate the organizational change we should begin guiding the successful change efforts the change agent should have at least a broad understanding of the context of the change effort why the change is happening why what is the need of the change so if the change agent has the understanding they would be able to communicate it to the employees as well basically organizational change should not be conducted for the sake of change we should understand the need for it why is it important how is it going to positively affect our organization so there are planned structured and explicit manners in which the change should be conducted the change effort should be geared to improve the performance of the organization as well as the people therefore it is useful to have some understanding what is meant by performance and the various methods to manage performance in the organization to improve the performance we need to have an understanding of it only then change can positively affect the development of the organization now there can be resistance to change if the change management or the management in general the top management they are not able to communicate the need to the employees so how can we manage the resistance to change there are various reasons for resistance to change that can be seen in the organization first could be mistrust and lack of confidence emotional responses due to the changes the lack of failure clashes between the unions and the managers so these resistance are inevitable now how can the senior management overcome these reasons it has been provided by cotter and schlesinger they are professors of 
prominent business management schools and they have proposed six crucial techniques for overcoming the resistance to change they have given various strategies and researches on how leadership and change works so according to them the strategies are first widespread education and improving communication this is the starting point for successful change that is honest communication should be there effective education it helps address the misconception because of which mistrust can occur in the organization second is participation and involvement involvement in a change program that is bringing people on board this can have positive not just compliance but on board they should be feeling that they are involved in the process of decision making as well as implementation then facilitation and support is important most people will need support to help them cope with the change so here in additional training counseling mentoring can help then agreement and negotiation that is also referred to as bargaining so that it can become a win win situation for all the parties involved co cooptation and manipulation it involves bringing specific individuals into roles that are a part of change so it involves the selective use of information the selective so manipulation might seem unethical but it is the only option if no other methods of overcoming resistance is working and finally coercion both explicit and implicit this is the last resort that is if other methods of overcoming resistance they change then they can be used now the big issue can be that almost inevitably the damages of trust can occur between the business it can also lead to damage morale so it coercion should be used only as a last resort so these are some of the strategies that are presented that can help the senior management overcome resistance and here in the steps they may industrial relation atmosphere they may change the industrial re relation atmosphere thus they should be taken only after carefully weighing and analyzing the pros and cons of the situation so while the discussion till now tells us about the change in organizations in general banking is no exception to it let us discuss some emerging change initiatives in the banking industry so the changes have occurred in the social technological economic and political scenario both in the national and the international era so in the national we can say during the 1969 nationalization of banks the concept of mass banking has been shifted towards a more class banking that is more customized and tailor made services are provided to the customers of the banks now and a new concept of profitability earlier it was more towards providing mass banking and profitability was not a criteria but now banks also they want profitability so they are cross selling they are upselling the add on services that are provided by the banks this has become possible because of the various initiatives that are taken by the government of india as well as when the banks are adopting the changes that are occurring in the global world so globalization in the international phase we can say globalization has occurred opening of of the banking industry to the foreign banks it has brought new technology new structures and hrm human resource management has also been brought into the banking structure now because of this various steps were also taken by rbi such as the reduction of bank rate the reduction of cash reserve ratio in phases was done so there was a gradual reduction in these rates basically to increase the loans the loan giving capability of the banks to enhance them also to give a competitive edge to the public sector banks the interest rates etc were reduced by rbi this is to increase the profits of the bank although it has not yet achieved the set goal but still it is working towards more processes to increase the profitability of the banks another very important change is the extensive use of computerization and information technology in the banking operations the increasing technology occurred in the first and the second generation reforms also reduced government stake in the state owned banks given banks more autonomy for example 
the ablation of the bsrbs the bs rbs that is the banking service recruitment boards it gave banks more powers to recruit individuals as per their local requirements so banks they have reoriented their programs policies and products towards changing environment according to the demands of the changing environment banks are also redesigning their processes further in the recent past various initiatives like instituting call centers to provide 24/7 services selling third party products like insurance products and investment products the wealth management policies portfolio management etc so these initiatives they come under the broader canvas of change management all of these changes that are occurring in the banking industry these come under the change initiatives next let us see the top trends in change management these trends have been brought to us by the 2009 study conducted by proski proski is a company headquartered in the united states and it was founded in 1994 so over the last 12 decades it has conducted studies it has given the benchmarking for the people and processes how managing can be done during organizational change so here in it was the study in 2009 and it has given the lessons that were learned by the practitioners and the consultants from their experiences in change management and the top trends as per the proski 2009 study here in the edition is known as the best practices in change management benchmarking report so it has provided the complete body of knowledge that is available in change management let us see what trends that were seen here first a greater recognition of the need for change management it is important for a better roi roi means return to investment whatever investment that the organization is putting it better returns can be seen if there is a greater recognition of the need for change management second change management competency building here in more knowledge and training opportunity should be provided at all the levels so that better change management can be implemented dedication of resources for change management here in assignment on projects and identified in organization so better resources and training is important use of methodology and tools there's a structured approach to the people side of change for that methodology and tools have been given that have to be used after that application on the projects that are sought out and brought in rather than looking for the projects to support that is application should be used and integration with the project management partnership should be created at the project and the methodology levels change saturation here if the feelings are there that consequences are too much to handle if the employees are feeling that the changes that are occurring are leading to deterioration in their productivity so in that case it refers to as change saturation it should be managed then standard change management approach it sends a strong message and increases consistency establishment of a change management group and finally management of the portfolio of change that is tracking managing and prioritizing the competing initiatives these are the top trends that is in the research it was seen how the past experiences of the managers and the practitioners they found important so these are the best practices these practices should be adopted if the organization wants to implement a successful change now who has the responsibility for managing the change in the organization here in the employees does not have a responsibility to manage change that is the employees responsibility no other than to do their best their only responsibility is to perform which is very different for every person and depends on a variety of factors such as how is the health of the employee their maturity stability experience skills so they can only perform their job they can do, do their job actually the responsibility for managing change is with the management and the executives of the organization they are the ones responsible to manage the change in the way that employees can cope with it it is if there is any change and it is creating negative effects of on the employees and they are not able to manage the change 
then it is not their fault it is the fault of the management and the executives so the manager has a responsibility to facilitate as well as enable change in a way that the employees can cope with it they should understand the situation from an objective standpoint and then help people understand the reasons why change is happening what is the aim as well as the ways of responding positively so increasingly the manager's role is to interpret communicate and enable not just to instruct and impose they should not use coercive methods they should try to make the employees understand as to why and how the change is going to occur which nobody really needs to respond to if there is any kind of impose that is forceful forcefully the management is only giving orders and they're not trying to understand the point of view of the employees then it is not the fault of the employees in view of their proximity to the people thus the management normally choose the hr management as the change agent so the human resource manager they will act as the change agent in the organization let us see how the change agent works so various studies and researches have been conducted to give the functions and responsibilities of the change agent one such research is conducted by haymaker which is an international consulting firm it was established in 1963 and it has the responsibility for specializing in the competency field that is they examine the motivations and they look for the core competencies that are required to help people achieve their full potential they have identified change management as increasingly important for the organizations of the future another research is conducted by dave alrich so now dave alrich is known as the father of modern hr he is known as the father of modern hr his research validated by the hr professionals and the line manager clients so both professionals as well as the clients they have validated the research conducted by dave alrich he is one of the world's leading business thinkers and have made a significant impact on the hr industry so he has shown that successful change agents had the ability they had certain abilities like first to diagnose problems they should understand both the business drivers as well as the organizations well enough to identify the performance crisis so as to analyze their impact on the short and the long term business results second they should have the ability to build relationship with the clients forming partnerships with mutual responsibility so that the outcomes of the change can be positive here higher risk is involved with more hr roles thus the level of trust is required to be much higher then ensure that the vision is articulated they should have the ability to interpret the hopes and the motivations of the workforce through the vision statement then set a leadership agenda this requires the change agent to understand the intimacy of the dynamics the history and competencies of the leadership term team as well as to have the ability to insist on the agenda's accomplishment then solve problems they should have the insight to recognize the problem as well as the sensitivity to understand its importance it is very important that they they have the courage to take honest and often difficult measures to resolve it as well as the credibility to be heard and then finally implement plans to achieve the change goals they should use the right strategy and appropriate change in the organization culture thus it relies heavily on the supportive people policy that is if the people they find that the change or the strategy that is being used it is supportive rather than coercive then it will have a positive impact now there are four key factors for the successful implementation of change within the organization first there should be a pressure for change we should understand the importance why the change is occurring it is demonstrated by the senior management's commitment then a clear shared vision should be there and it should be clear communicated with everyone this is a shared agenda that will benefit the whole organization the capacity for change we should understand the resources that the organization has how much time and finance it can devote and finally the action and performance that is plan do 
check and act it is a dynamic strategy we should keep communication channels open we should first plan implemented also check if it is going according to the strategy and then act accordingly next topic is managing the change now managing change involves various phases in the implementation of the plan change the plan change it is affected in a planned manner and there is a need to assess the change that is being occurring for this purpose a detailed plan has to be worked out as to when and how these changes will be implemented on the other hand if unplanned change is occurring it can occur at a random manner like a strike like an industrial strike it can have negative effects on the organization so there are certain phases first phase is the preparatory stage in which the management has to create a felt need for the change among the workforce it has to make sure that the employees the workforce they understand why the change is required what is its importance it is when the system shall be suitably prepared to start the change by establishing a good relationship and helping them to realize that the change it has positive outcomes if they prevent behaviors attitude and efforts they are not effective further the management should try to minimize the express resistance then the second phase would be in which the actual change is initiated now the plan that was created it is implemented it is implemented by the management by seeking and enlisting the corporation and support from all those who matter from the change now this can be done by first identifying the new and more effective ways of doing things the most creative manner that would be acceptable to the employees then choosing the appropriate changes in the task people it is prioritizing and third is taking appropriate and suitable steps to put this change into action so before executing the plan of change it is imperative on the part of the management to assess the forces that are that will go that are going to affect the change program in either way so which factors will work in the favor and the influence of the change initiators and who will work against it or who will try to resist the change these have to be identified now if the management finds that there are resisting forces they can confront with them three situations are presented in the first situation if the favoring forces far outweigh the resisting force then the management can push the favoring forces while overpowering the resistance force here in the positive forces they can be motivated they can be further enhanced by the management if the favoring forces are more than the resisting force this is the first situation second situation in case the favoring forces and the resisting forces are equal that is equal employees they are favoring and equal are resisting the change then the management can push up the favoring forces and simultaneously convert the resisting forces into favoring ones they should try to convert the resisting forces they should try to come make them come on board with the process and then the third situation if the resisting forces are stronger than the favoring forces then the management may strive to weaken them by converting most of them into the favoring forces so here in proper strategies have to be implemented so that the implementation of the plan changes can be done however despite its best effort if the management could not succeed in converting most of these into the favoring forces then they can choose to postpone the change management to be undertaken at a later date so that better communication can be done so in case the changes are essential if they are essential as well as in the best interest then the organization the management have to take such action such as they can drop off they can lay off the employees who are creating the resistance so more coercive methods can be taken if there is no other chance left and then after this the third phase is come that is the last phase of the change process in which the management should ensure that the plan change so introduced in the organization conforms to the objectives of the change process that it we should monitor once the plans have been implemented 
this can be done by first creating acceptance and continuity for the new behaviors attitudes or the work process second by providing necessary resource support both human and finance and third providing necessary motivation through performance linked rewards and positive reinforcements so this being a stage in which the performance of the change process is evaluated whether or not it is working as per the objectives and it is assessed from time to time this can be done through proper feedback collected from the employees as well as the management and even follow up measures can be taken if this stage however is neglected then the very purpose of change will be defeated thus all these phases that is preparatory implementation and the follow up are important for implementing a planned change successfully next topic is john b cotter's eight step to successful change cotter is regarded he is internationally known as the foremost speaker on topics of leadership and change we have already seen his contribution in this regarding successful change implementation he has given books first leading change that came in 1995 and its follow up that is the heart of change that came in 2002 these books describe a helpful model for understanding and managing change so in this these books he has given the various steps that can be taken for managing change each of these stages they acknowledge a key principle that is identified by cotter relating to the people's response to the change in which the people see feel and then they change thus they can be summarized as first stage is increase urgency that is try to inspire the people to move make objectives real and relevant creating urgency means telling the importance of the change second stage is build at the guiding team get the right people in place with the right emotional commitment and the right mix of skills and level so that they can guide the people towards the successful implementation third get the vision right that is the team that has been made they can set a simple vision and strategy focus on the emotional and creative aspects necessary to drive the service and efficiency so the team now they have need to have a clear vision as to what steps they are going to take the strategy that they are going to use they should focus on the emotional aspects so as to create efficiency in the change implementation fourth step will be to communicate for buy in involve as many people as possible bringing on board the workforce and the employees communicating the essentials that are required and simply appeal and respond to the people's needs here decluttering of communication is important technology can be used for our favor technology such as email for giving notices various communications from the top management to the employees at all the levels this should be done fifth step is to empower action for this it is important to remove the obstacles that the workforce is facing enable constructive feedback from the employees and lots of support from the leaders this can be done through the reward system and recognizing the progress and achievements positive reinforcement should be given then sixth is creating short term wins short term goals are more easier to achieve so manageable numbers of initiatives should be done and finish the current stages before starting new ones this would create a sense of security among the people involved seventh don't let up even if there is resistance or the process is slow we should try to foster and encourage determination and persistence we should encourage the ongoing process by reporting and highlighting the achieved and future milestones and then finally eighth step is to make the change stick so when the change has been successfully achieved we should try to reinforce the value via equipment promotion new change leaders also we should try to weave change into the culture now perhaps the best study of organizational development was conducted by sloan in 1964 sloan was an american business executive basically in the automotive industry and he conducted researches 
through which he stated that the general motors corporation general motors corporation they divided its activities into engineering production sales and finance and it set up committees at the center to coordinate the policies at the center while decentralizing the administration they also established the financial controls then there were added engineering research and technical staff these steps made it possible for general motors corporation to make continuous changes in the technology and products and overall organization if we take the case of india so there are various examples like organizational structural changes that were made by apollo hospitals recently to expand its operations and it had created several divisions keeping in view its products and services as well as its wishes how it wants to expand its market it appointed chosen leaders in the health field to provide leadership in the industrial field as well structural changes successfully have been made by the birla startas ambani's these are only some of the examples and all they have followed are the steps for successful structural change implementation next topic is responsibility charting as the name suggests it is creating a chart dividing the responsibilities among the various members of the organization so what is it it is a technique for identifying the functional areas where there are the process ambiguities bringing the differences out in the open and then resolving them through a cross functional collaborative effort so it is a all round technique it starts from first finding out the problems the issues that are interrupting the productivity of the organization then second we need to find out the reasons the differences what are the reasons because of which these issues are occurring and third we need to solve those problems this can be done by providing this can be done by relocating the responsibilities among the various cross function and providing a collaborative effort now it is we can say a method of assigning role and defining the interrelationship of the roles for specific decisions how the roles are interrelated and there's a need of collaborative effort second a foundation for sound delegation delegation of responsibilities third it is a basis for holding the people accountable for their roles now when the people they are given responsibility if there is any non occurrence of if there is non fulfillment then we know who to hold accountable it is also a shorthand language for communication about the roles and responsibilities the chart contains different people's names and the roles that they have been provided so it will communicate to us how the responsibilities have been delegated and finally it works as a decision matrix or a grid where the actual and the potential stakeholders are listed horizontally and then the decisions or the tasks are listed vertically that is horizontally we will list the people the potential stakeholders and then their responsibilities we will show it vertically on the chart so all the people that are working in the organization here the responsibility of the chart itself could be shared and then it could be approved by the various committees and boards now let us see what is the design of the responsibility chart first what is the use of responsibility charting it can be used to identify the individual and the team roles and how collaborative efforts are important in the interrelationships second it can also be used to clearly state the procedural specification of individual what steps do they need to follow what is the responsibility towards the team as well as the set time frames under which the task has to be accomplished to understand and clarify the roles and expectations from any individual and to improve the accountability delegation and communication it also helps that there is no overlap if there is overlapping of task or responsibility it can lead to loss of resources so to avoid that also responsibility charts can be used the key elements are the decisions or the task the roles that have to be provided what are the responsibilities the tasks that have to be completed or the projects of the organization then stakeholders are the people to whom the task will be allotted and third is the level of participation of each stakeholder in each decision of the task that is the level of responsibility provided so these are the key 
elements that will be seen in a chart. Next, how the analysis of a responsibility chart is then a complete analysis of the chart should be done in collaboration with all the important members. So we can answer some questions such as do too many don't knows indicate the need for more structural and procedural specification. Don't knows means that communication has not been successful or specification is not there. So if there are too many don't knows, does it need for more structural or more procedural specification? Second, do the project directors have too many responsibilities? Are too many tasks given to one person? Are they overburdened with the task? If so, it can be relocated. Third, is there a sufficient level of participation by the collaborative members? Are the related members who have an interrelationship they working towards their providing equally? Fourth, how can one use the structure and procedures of collaboratives to promote higher participation, how they can increase higher participation from each and every member. Can one cluster the various tasks or decisions according to the planning and policy, implementation and day-to-day -day administrative categories so that more uh, efficient delegation of tasks can be done. Can be done clustering. Then what are the other agencies or the organizations besides those in the collaborative that should be kept informed of one's activities. That is the team that one belongs to apart from that. Are there any other agencies organizations that have to be informed? They need the information. If these agencies they are interrelated, if they depend on the work of each other, then it should be done. And also how they will be informed, how the communication will be passed on. So the responsibility chart itself could be shared and approved by the various committees and boards. They can, by looking at the responsibility charts, understand how all of these responsibilities have been delegated. So what is the design of a responsibility chart? We have already said that it is a good example of a project management tool and it can be used in a very interactive and participatory work so as to engage a group of stakeholders. If they are interrelated, that is, there is a collaborative effort that is needed from the part of all the stakeholders. There is a common set of tasks or decisions that must be carried out in a project. For example, the finance team needs to collaborate with the marketing team to make the right decision for the allocation of finance. So the process is used to compare how the different stakeholders currently perceive their roles, how they identify the discrepancies, also to reach consensus on how decisions ought to be made. So there's a usually it produces a lot of learning for the participants as well. They learn better how to create better communication channels, how to collaborate, understand each other's point of views, take decisions accordingly. As with many management tools, it is important how well it is utilized. It can be used in a bureaucratic manner that precludes participation or in an interactive way that encourages the exploration and action learning. So it depends on how well it is being used. It can be a good activity designing and the end produces a clear picture. It can give us a clear picture of the interrelated roles and relationships that must be managed well if we want to accomplish the project within a given time frame. Now let us look at a sample chart of how responsibility chart can be created. First step is to distribute the chart to all the members in the participatory group. Then we need to enter the task in the left column, this one. Here first column names of the individuals, let's say A, B, C. Then the task will be entered in the next column. Then the team members, they will mark who they think are responsibility for each task. They have the responsibility. So this is the remarks column. And then we will discuss the answers as a group and make final decisions regarding the responsibilities. So the team list activities, they should be assigned clearly, such as person A has the task of leading the group. B has the task of resources. C has the task of communication. Accordingly, remarks will be provided. 
so now have your team list activities not clearly assigned to a person or group of people these examples can be used to increase discussions and we should aim for a list of not more than 20 items so the tasks are given the marks are given and the date till the task in which has to be completed so here various kinds of responsibilities can be done or the task can be given in the chart such as there are the meeting responsibilities like sending out the meeting material who has the responsibility to send out the communication agendas and minutes of the meeting setting up the meeting room who has the responsibility of cleaning up making minutes and facilitating meeting helping the group when it's stuck maintaining files leading the warm-ups etc so these are some of the meeting responsibilities that can be delegated to the team members then there are also project responsibilities like maintaining the picture book format gathering data plotting charts and maintaining files so like in the chart names can be given names of the team members and then first member can have the responsibility of maintaining the picture book format another team member b can have the responsibility of facilitating meetings the remarks can tell us whether or not the individuals know about these responsibilities and then the third kind of responsibility is of education or training such as teaching statistical tools to the team members, teaching the project management skills or the meeting management skills for this creating a chart. In this chart, we will set up the chart as illustrated. We will give responsibilities of 20 items or more. Then we will list the tasks identified in the group and meetings and discussion in the task column. So these names are then allotted the responsibility. After that, work through the chart that is one at a time one task at a time it is very important to remember having each member mark the column representing the group or persons they think is responsible for the task for example one individual thinks that a is responsibility for has the responsibility for teaching the statistical tool so they should mark it accordingly and then each member can use a different color marker as well it is done for each of the tasks that is listed. For example, person A thinks that distributing the minutes of the meeting has the responsibility with whom. So they can say it has the, the person B has the responsibility. So it would be given in the remarks column. So this is known as working through the chart and finally discuss the answers. Again, working through the matrix or the grid one task at a time we should not move on to the next task until the team has reached consensus on which person or group is responsible for the task. We can also decide to rotate the responsibility between people or the group, but we should first clearly set down the procedures as to how and when it will be done. So this is how a responsibility chart can be created. We can delegate, we can see how well the people know who has the responsibility of performing a certain function and so on so in this chapter we have seen how the issue of continuous interest to all the organization that is change management works how the responsibilities are allocated resistance to change and how it is managed in a common workplace with this we have come to the end of this lesson keep learning with us Thank you.